Marvelous hello, friends and loved ones, how are you today? So, a while back, I did a video called Betrayal and the Future of Persona 5, where I discussed some points of interest from the game and what I thought it could mean for the future of the series. Honestly, I really liked making that video, and it was pretty well received, so I'd like to test the waters on my channel a bit and make more videos to just discuss... things. Things about the series that I find interesting, or ideas I feel like mentioning, and I figured I'd get started with a topic I've been thinking about a lot. Like, even before I had a YouTube channel, I've wanted to talk about this. Does the fox from Persona 4 have a persona? I personally think it does, but before I get into the matter further, consider this your spoiler warning for Personas 3, 4, Arena, and Ultimax. There are multiple reasons why I think it's not so far-fetched to assume our foxy friend here has access to a persona, but allow me to go over them as best as I can. Let's get the biggest and most simple one out of the way first. Koromaru exists. He alone establishes a precedent that animals are capable of wielding a persona just as skillfully as people can, so right off the bat, simply being a fox does not discredit the possibility. Now on to the slightly more complicated stuff. Throughout the course of the original Persona 4, excluding certain supernatural beings like Teddy or the Velvet Room attendants, a grand total of 14 characters enter the TV world from the outside. Mayumi Yamano, Saki Konishi, Yu Narukami, Yosuke Hanamura, Chie Satonaka, Yuki Koamagi, Kanji Tatsumi, Rise Kujikawa, Mitsuo Kubo, Naoto Shirogane, Taro Namatame, Nanako Dojima, Toru Odachi, and... The Fox. This sounds like a lot, but let me try and break it down some. The vast majority of these characters exhibit at least one of two events upon entering the TV world. Either the creation of their own dungeon, or the manifestation of their own shadow. Yukiko, Kanji, Risei, Mitsuo, and Naoto all experienced both of these events throughout the course of the game for the player to see. Mayumi and Saki did both create their own dungeons, and while we never got a chance to meet them, Persona 4 does heavily imply, possibly even outright state, their shadows are the ones that killed them. So even though we don't see them, they were presumably around at some point. A handful of the remaining characters on this list exhibit one of these events, but not the other. Yosuke and Chie both encountered their shadow selves without creating their own dungeon, while Nanako created her own dungeon, but did not have a shadow. In regards to the latter, the game states Nanako was simply too young to have strong enough repressed feelings to make a shadow. And in the case of the two former ones, the explanation as to why they don't have their own dungeons is probably just due to simple gameplay reasons, rather than a specific story reason. But I have my own guess as to why that may be that I'll get to shortly. So if you've been keeping track, that leaves us with four characters that didn't experience either of the two most common side effects of entering the TV world, or at the very least experienced very different instances of them. Yunarukami, Toru Odachi, Taro Namatame, and... Fox. If you've beaten Persona 4, you already know why the first three were so different. They all essentially had a persona granted to them by Izanami before entering the TV world, or at least were given what I'm going to refer to as the Izanagi potential. This potential is also the basis for the guess I mentioned a little bit ago regarding Yosuke and Chie. As we know from the game, if someone is thrown into the TV world, they create a world and shadow. What makes Yosuke and Chie so different is they weren't initially thrown in, but brought in by someone with the potential. It's a bit of a fine line, but that one little detail is my only attempt at a story-related reason why those two characters didn't create their own worlds while nearly everyone else did. My point is that the Fox is the only character in Persona 4 to enter the TV world throughout the story that doesn't experience either event or seem to already have latent abilities beforehand. To demonstrate this point further as to why I think this could mean the Fox already has a Persona throughout the events of Persona 4, I ask that we look to Persona 4 Arena. In that game, again, excluding certain supernatural characters, we have four new characters entering the TV world for the first time. Mitsuru Kirijo, Akihiko Sonata, Aegis, and Labrys. Of these four, Labrys is the only one who creates a world and shadow similar to those seen in the original game, with Mitsuru, Akihiko, and Aegis not dealing with either of these things, giving us the impression that if someone is already a Persona user, even when entering the TV world for the first time, they don't trigger any of the known effects. The next point I want to talk about is being in the TV world itself. It's well established that the TV world has very different effects on those that do or do not have a Persona. To those without a Persona, the TV world is a very draining place, bringing normal people inside of it to severe exhaustion that can sometimes take weeks of recovery to get over. 
While Persona users seem relatively fine in the grand scheme of things, but the fox doesn't experience fatigue in the dungeons. It comes and goes with the rest of the team, never showing any major signs of exhaustion. It even manages to get around on its own just fine without the need for the glasses that even the party members need to get around in the fog. Speaking of coming and going with the rest of the team, let's also take a moment to remember the fox goes into the TV world with the investigation team. Those without personas or a similar potential need to be brought in by somebody else. So, either the fox is capable of entering the TV world just fine on its own, or someone, probably Kanji, needs to carry the fox with them anytime they go in. This may be the only moment where I'd like to be wrong about this, because frankly, that sounds adorable. And while we're on the subject of this whole thing being wrong, this wouldn't be an in-depth look at the possibility if I didn't discuss my own questions and concerns regarding how I could be completely wrong about this. The first is related to what I just touched on. The fox can explore the TV world without any problems at all. It's a well-established fact that while the fog is in the TV world, shadows do not attack those that don't have a persona. So it's entirely possible that the fox being able to get around, unhindered, could be the most convincing counter-argument against this whole concept. Another smaller note is in Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, while using Ken and Koromaru's number 9 color palette, Koromaru and Cerberus both have the Fox's color scheme. While generally number 9 palettes show off the colors of a Persona character and their respective Persona. Could mean nothing, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't address it nonetheless. Now I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, if the Fox has a Persona, why doesn't it aid the team in battle? My guess is that the Fox's persona is probably more of a support persona, but rather than being an analytical support persona like Rise has, I believe the Fox's persona may have a different type of ability up its sleeves. If it has any sleeves. For example, let's take a careful look at what the Fox does in Persona 4. For large sums of money, the Fox will give you a magic leaf that will cure your party's SP. In other words, their very method of using their persona's magic. That's how it works in the TV world. Outside the TV world, our very introduction to the fox has you using one of the leaves on a tired old man, instantly rejuvenating him and putting a spring in his step. I mean seriously, look at him go! I want you all to take a moment and ask yourselves a couple of questions. Outside of things connected in some way to personas and shadows and whatnot, how many instances of supernatural occurrences can be found in games like Persona 3 or 4? The only real instance I could think of is that ghost lady they added to Persona 4 Golden. My point is, let's think about what the more logical option here is using the world and logic of Persona itself. Is there a bush full of magical leaves that the fox collects and sells, or are these just normal leaves imbued with Persona energy from the fox itself? Before you accuse me of pulling that second option out of nowhere, I'd like to remind you that we have seen another Persona user doing exactly this. In Persona 3, Chidori Yoshino was able to use her Persona ability to bring dead flowers back to life by putting energy into them. From her hospital bed, not during the dark hour, and without an evoker. And, we know the flowers she gave this energy to were able to redistribute it, from the fact that those flowers are apparently how Chidori was brought back to life. Which honestly, I still have no idea if that's canonical or not, but th that's a discussion for another video. So taking into account all of this information, the fact that animals can have personas, the fact that the fox reacts to the TV world much more like those that already have a persona versus those that don't, in terms of both entering it and exploring it, and the fact that the possibly magic leaves the fox has access to greatly resembles a pre-existing persona user's abilities, I personally find it very hard to believe that the fox from Persona 4 is just a normal fox, and instead choose to believe that it has a persona of its own. What about you? Do you agree with this reasoning that the fox could have a persona? If not, I'd love to hear why you don't think so. But whether you agree with me or not, remember, that's just a theory. You know what? I'm not doing that. Bye bye